Hello everyone, welcome to the video, and today we're going to be talking about a heavy weapons guide, uh, and what I mean by this is just how to use every single one of these weapons. On this rack right here, we're going to be moving from left to right, and we're going to do an in-depth guide on how to use them, when you should be using them, and what attachments you should have on them. So before I get into the video, I do want to say that about 90% of you guys are not actually subscribed, so if you could drop that sub, it would help a lot. I post content daily, and I promise you will not be disappointed. So let's get right into the video. Coming up first, we have the Wingman. The Wingman is possibly one of the best weapons in the game. Um, it rewards you a lot for hitting your shots, and that's why I think that this weapon itself has a lot to do with accuracy. As you can tell, I really like the 1X HCOT Classic. At the end of the day, it does have a lot to do with comfortability and what you're, what you're confident with, but I believe that this is the best sight you can put on your Wingman just because of the fact that it is so precise, and if you can get your aim down, you're going to be destroying people all the time. So the wingman also recently got a, a buff where you can see very, very easily and your shots connect more often with the actual iron sight. And the shot can be a little bit weird on console. Um, that is something that I feel like everyone has run into. Uh, as you can see, especially with long distance ones, you kind of just want to time your shots a little bit with the wingman. Um, as you can see there, it's a lot more consistent. You gotta wait for that to come back down because if you just rapid fire it uh you you miss a lot more shots than you normally would uh just because it's it, i don't know it doesn't feel right i mean i i have it down to a science at this point uh about as good as you're gonna have it for console players but overall the wingman is a very very high skill cap weapon um and it takes a lot of time to get used to the shot especially on console the hit registration is a little bit weird on console since we're capped at 60 frames, the aiming is actually a little bit weird. Um, so if you're not 100% confident with the wingman, either practice it a ton in firing range, or overall just avoid it, because this weapon could easily get you killed if you are not experienced with it. So that's pretty much it for the wingman. Uh, there's really not a whole lot that goes into being good with this weapon. It's basically just hit your shots. Um, there's not a whole lot else I can say. If you're missing a majority of your shots, you might want to try um, timing them a little bit more, waiting a little bit in between your shots because that could actually be messing you up. Because if you shoot really fast, as you can see, even though I was aiming at this guy's head, it is going to pull up and you will not be hitting it every time. So it, it actually messes up its own aim because it shoots a little bit faster than the gun actually recovers from the recoil. So you just want to be a little bit careful with rapid firing the wingman. And if you do, you just want to um, compensate for it. So next gun up we have the Spitfire. Spitfire is an amazing weapon. It has a million bullets and this is one of the guns that you can use. I really really like the 1X HCOG Classic. It's my favorite sight but man I'll tell you the Spitfire with the Bruiser is absolutely devastating. Um, this gun is insane at long ranges and can really do a ton of damage as you can see here. Uh, so the Spitfire really really does benefit a ton from using the Bruiser and the Bruiser is an amazing sight to use on it If you are not already using it, I would definitely recommend it in terms of the Spitfire I've seen some players run with the 3x. I would honestly avoid this uh, because Honestly, I just don't think it is amazing for the Spitfire uh, and, I, and I really do believe that the Spitfire benefits most from the 1x or the Bruiser depending on what ranges you want to use it from uh, the Spitfire does have a lot of damage fall off and should be used mostly from short to medium range. It can be used long range. And, and I say that if you if you have the 2X, you can really, really benefit from using this gun long range. Uh, it does a ton of damage, as you can see right there. Uh, it has a million bullets in the clip, like I said before. Um, and realistically, it can be used very well at long range. But I feel like its specialty is short range. So another thing to note with the Spitfire is that actually hip firing with this weapon is incredibly, incredibly good. So what I mean by this is, as you can see right there, I mean, I'm able to hit that target a ton, right? So the hip fire clearly is, is really good on it. And there's so many bullets that even if I'm missing a lot of these, like that guy just got one clipped right there. 200, 200, like, so... You know, even if you're close range, don't be afraid to just drop all aim in general and, you know, go a little crazy with the hip fire because you're not going to run out of ammo. 
So, you know, hip fire with the Spitfire is amazing. So don't definitely don't sleep on it because it's probably one of the best guns for, for hip firing just because you can't actually run out of ammo. And another thing this gun does very, very well with is pair with legends like Gibraltar. Uh, Gibraltar pairs very well with this weapon because you're not one clipping Gibraltar. So basically what's going to happen is you're just going to die. Um, because if Gibby picks something like this up, he's going to melt whoever because unless he's getting one clipped, he's killing you. Uh, and that's one tip I have for reversing a Spitfire because this gun can be incredibly frustrating. It's uh, play a lot behind cover because if someone had, catches you in, in open range with a Spitfire, they're going to absolutely demolish you. Uh, so you want to be able to get behind cover while you're reloading because that is where the Spitfire is the most dangerous is when someone with an R9 runs out of ammo and your opponent has a Spitfire. They're going to win every single time. So... That is one tip with Spitfire, and next up we have the Prowler. Um, so, I don't know where, okay. So the Prowler is an amazing weapon. Uh, as you guys know, it actually probably is the best SMG in the game at this point, but I feel like a ton of people actually sleep on the Burst. Uh, so if you guys haven't noticed this by now, the Burst does uh, more damage per second than the actual Full Auto. And also the Full Auto can be a little bit difficult to control, um, I'm almost positive that someone did a full test and the burst did a significant amount more damage. Uh, but one thing to note is that without a mag, without a heavy mag, uh, the burst is an ammo hog. It's an absolute ammo hog. You only get four of them. So since the gun is a five round burst, you can catch yourself running out of ammo extremely quickly. So you just want to be a little bit mindful of that. Keep that in the back of your head um, just in case because you don't want to be caught while you're reloading and whatnot so uh, the prowler is incredibly good close range it's also incredibly good with a digital threat um, the golden prowler is an absurd weapon it's very very powerful and with a 35 mag you can really really benefit from using the gun one thing i can say is this gun is not very effective at medium to long range it definitely suffers a lot uh, i'm able to control my recoil a lot but uh, overall the gun is not great because you can't put a barrel stabilizer on it and that's the case as you can see it's very very difficult there's a lot of horizontal recoil as well uh, like with an R9 I'd definitely be able to hit over 200 on that consistently um, but that's just not the case with this because the it's, it's very difficult to aim since there's no stabilizer and you could catch yourself in long range situations getting demolished by other guns so you basically just want to keep this I mean overall it is an SMG so you want to keep it short range uh, you don't want to overextend your range with this because you will catch yourself uh, getting demolished. So, and another thing is uh, don't sleep on the burst. I know a lot of people think it needs a select fire, but I promise you guys, this gun does not need the select fire. It is perfectly fine without the select fire, but uh, look how much damage it does. Full burst to the head. That's 115. Another burst to the body and they're basically dead. 115 to the head, that's, that's literally one burst if they don't have shield. These people are getting demolished if you are able to hit your shots with this. So, Prowler Burst and the fact that it's able to get off extremely quickly. Do not sleep on it. Don't avoid the Prowler if you don't have a Select Fire. I promise you uh, the Burst is just as good, if not better. So next up we have the Hemlock. Uh, the Hemlock, in my opinion, is a gun that benefits greatly if you use it at range. So what I mean by this is switch it to Single Fire and you can just absolutely laser people. Uh, this is definitely like a contender with a G7 as one of the best long range weapons in the game. As you can see there, if you hit all of your shots, you're hitting 660 damage, and it is not even that difficult to hit the shots. The rapid fire on the single fire makes it an incredibly devastating weapon at range. So you just wanna keep this in mind while you're using the hemlock, because if you're using it like, you know, this on, you know, this is, and whereas the Hemlock burst fire close range, you know, it's not bad. Um, you're using the gun wrong. So, and, and it is pretty good at hip fire. If you ever get a, a Hemlock off spawn and it's all you have to use, uh, the hip fire is pretty solid on it. But overall, the best way to use the Hemlock is by throwing on a long range scope, switching it to single fire, and then just spamming the enemy. Uh, this gun is particularly devastating on a head glitch, so I'll just go back here real quick and show you guys uh, something like this. You're going to literally laser people, 
uh, can be a little bit difficult to control but overall if your head is peeking up just like this you're going to laser people so playing with this weapon on a head glitch can be very 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 effective um, and the gun in general is just very very good on single fire mode with long range attachments on it so if i was using the hemlock i would use it as a secondary uh a long range weapon i would use like an r9 a prowler peacekeeper as your short range weapon and then use this as kind of like your sniper it's probably one of the best weapons in the game right now but tons of people sleep on it so if you guys haven't tried out the hemlock yet i promise you if you give it a chance you will not be disappointed so next up we have the flatline flatline is a very very weird weapon uh, the recoil can be a little bit strange sometimes and overall I think this gun is extremely good at close range medium range is decent and it's even good at long range but you have to use it the right way so as you can see here I have the 1x on it and that's completely fine the recoil pattern does pull a lot to the left and right so I would avoid using this gun altogether at long ranges um, because you're not going to be using it effectively now we'll come back to that as you can see it pulls me to the left it pulls me to the right so using it full auto long range is not the way to be using the flatline um, it's an amazing weapon short range as you can see here i'm going to be able to demolish people the damage per second is outstanding um, and even the the hip fire is pretty solid as well so you could really really use this weapon very effectively close range and i'd say that this is a, about as far i'd say this range right here is about as far as you should be using the flat line because as you can see here it definitely starts to affect your aim um, but in terms of the recoil I would say just try to adjust as fast as you can because it does pull to the left it does pull to the right and it could mess up your aim significantly luckily there's 30 bolts in a clip so you have enough ammo to be able to correct yourself but the best way in terms of controlling the recoil is either not using it at range or just kind of trying to keep your stick or, or your aiming centralized uh, because it's it's not like other weapons where it's going to just bounce up and you have to pull down the analog stick you basically have to have like a firm hold on the analog stick and be ready to pull to the left to the right wherever it's going to jump because this thing literally kicks like a mule and you have to be ready for that you have to be ready to correct it when it does so I'd say the best way of using the actual flatline is either running a 2x or a 1x and you can even get away as, with running a 3x if you just did the single fire on it because the flatline does amazing damage as you can see right there 86 to the head 86 to the head is a, is a really really good number uh, with this anvil receiver it's extremely effective uh, so definitely don't sleep on it but you can I think the the, the flatline overall would benefit a lot more as uh, a weapon that you could use long range so down range i think is is the best way of using this weapon with like an r9 uh, you can pair it very well with an r9 just run flat line with the anvil and that way even if someone gets close you know this 2x isn't even that bad as you can see there it helps with your aim a lot um just just definitely you need to be aiming center of mass with the flat line because it does kick it kicks to the left it kicks to the right and that way if you're aiming at their actual chest you know when it's kicking everywhere you're going to be able to really stabilize it a lot better because the recoil on this gun is a lot it's a lot to handle so i'd say if you're using it down range just ditch the automatic overall uh, i think you're going to be losing out on a lot of damage if you stay with the automatic long range um and also try to land your headshots because this gun can be very effective i think it is personal preference depending on how you're going to use it uh, if you want to use it as a short range weapon, I would use a 1x on it, the 1x HCOG, and I would not try to use it at far ranges. With the anvil, you can use it at decent range, uh, but I think there's definitely a point where you are going to need the anvil because the gun just becomes a little bit irrelevant at longer ranges, uh, and that's just how it was made. There's no barrel stabilizer to help it. So at long ranges, you're just gonna wanna ditch the automatic and switch to the anvil. So overall, depending on how you're gonna use it, uh, if you're gonna use it short range for a CQB weapon, 1X is the best. Uh, if you're going to use it as a second AR or an AR to complement um, an actual like R9 or Prowler, I would say run the 2X. 
And if you're going to use it as a long range weapon exclusively, just run the 3x and um, you know, see how that works out for you. So that's pretty much it for today's video. That's a full guide for heavy weapons. So if you guys like this video, just drop a like and drop a comment for which weapon category you want me to do next. I'm going to probably make a series out of this, as in like full shotguns guide, full light web, uh, full light ammo guide, um, as well as snipers, energy weapons, and golden weapons. So drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.